Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Set up the point. Okay, um, so um, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I think in Korean it is Anyo uh, Haseyo. Um, uh, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I know that we are all scattered around the world. Um, so uh, let me begin by uh, thanking uh, Professors Chell Ho Choi and Michael Filatov and uh, Drs. Jong Suk Ruth Lee and uh, Jong Hyun Jerry Seo for the invitation. As you can see from the title, this talk will focus on our computation studies of a novel organic compound, which we abbreviate as FR0SB, uh, that uh, uh, can deprotonate alcohols upon photo excitation by becoming a very strong base uh, uh, in excited electronic state. So uh, our computations are part of a much larger uh, collaboration involving four experimental groups uh, in uh, our department at Michigan State University, the groups of uh, professors Babak Borhan, uh, James Jackson, Marcus Dantos, and uh, Gary Blanchard. Uh, we have published uh, several papers together in recent years. Uh, I'm showing them here, uh, I think six papers altogether. Today we'll focus on um, uh, three of them. We'll begin by discussing the physical origins of photobasicity of FR0SB. Um, you will see that uh, this system in the ground electronic state is benign. It's an organic molecule with pKa of about seven, but upon photo excitation, it becomes a very strong base with pKa of about 21. Um, so I think it is the strongest known photo base uh, uh, right now. Um, then after that, we'll discuss the possibility of enhancing the reactivity of FR0SB by uh, turning to two photon excitations. And in the last part of our talk, uh, will um, discuss the significance of the steric effects on the uh, excited state proton transfer reactions that drive the reactivity of, of FR0SB with alcohols. But before we do all of this, um, let me say a bit about theories that uh, will be used in our computations. We'll rely on the kappa cluster theory. So um, let me remind you that in the single reference kappa cluster theory, we obtain the ground electronic state by applying the exponential operator e to the t to the reference determinant phi. Uh, in our computations, the reference determinant phi will be the restricted Hartree-Fock determinant. Now, the cluster operator T is typically written as a sum of various many body contributions, T1 for one electron excitations, T2 for two electron excitations, T3 for three electron excitations, and so on. And uh, by truncating the many body expansion for the cluster operator, we obtain familiar kappa cluster approximation, beginning with CCSD, then we have CCSDT, CCSDTQ, and so on. And uh, we obtain the cluster amplitudes defining the cluster operator components, T1, T2, and so on, by projecting the Schrodinger equation with the kappa cluster wave function in it on the excited Slater determinants uh, that correspond to the content of the cluster operator. And we then calculate the ground state energy by projecting the Schrodinger equation with the kappa cluster wave function in it on the reference determinant phi. Now in this talk, we'll be focusing on photochemistry. So we have to turn to uh, kappa cluster methods for excited electronic states. Um, they exist under uh, various names of the equation of motion kappa cluster methods, SAC CI approaches or response kappa cluster methods. All of them boil down to a very straightforward way of representing the excited state wave functions by applying the linear excitation operator R to the ground kappa cluster state. Um, in this talk, we'll focus on methods based on the equation of motion kappa cluster theory, or EOMCC, where after doing the math with the ansatz for the wave function that you see here, we end up with the eigenvalue problem involving the similarity transform Hamiltonian H bar, uh, which is uh, more or less uh, the effective Hamiltonian of kappa cluster theory. After diagonalizing this similarity transform Hamiltonian, we obtain vertical excitation energies omega and the corresponding many body components of the linear excitation operator R. And just like in the ground state case, we obtain approximations by truncating the many body expansions for the cluster operator T and the excitation operator R. So we end up with the, uh, approach, uh, the basic approach EOMCCSD and then higher level schemes like EOMCCSDT, EOMCCSDTQ and so on. Now, the higher order methods like EOMCCSDT 
uh, and uh, sometimes higher, uh, are uh, needed to obtain the quantitative uh, accuracy, but they are often prohibitively expensive for larger systems, uh, especially systems like FR0 SB, uh, which you will see is a system of about 60 atoms. And then when we add solvent molecules, that's even more. Um, so we have to typically resort to approximations. And um, quite often, those approximations are based on non iterative. Uh, perturbative corrections to EUMCCSD energies, such as EUMCCSD parenthesis T and similar approaches, or uh, iterative but still perturbative approximations to linear response CCSDT, uh, such as CC3. Well, in this talk, we'll focus on the robust, uh, um, completely normalized triples corrections to EUMCCSD, which define the approach which we abbreviate as delta CR EUMCC23, developed in our group and available in the games package. So uh, what is a uh, Piotr, could you yeah, turn on the uh, microphone, please? Yeah, turn on your microphone, please. Yeah, I can see your screen, so it's perfectly OK. So okay. Somehow no, we panic. Just, no panic, no panic. Disconnected. Yeah. Um, OK, um, so continuing. So CRUMCC23, um, um, it's, it's a triples correction to the total EUM energies of EUMCCSD. Those uh, triples corrections are written here as the delta symbol. Um, so uh, those are non-perturbative non corrections. So we write them as linear combinations of quantities uh, designated here as M. Those Ms are. Um, are uh, moments of uh, EUMCCSD equations. They are projections of the shredding equation with the EUMCCSD wave function on the triply excited determinants. Now we also need the L amplitudes then multiply the moments. Th those L amplitudes are obtained by analyzing the uh, left eigenvalue problem of the similarity transform Hamiltonian H bar in the entire Mendel electron Hilbert space. After processing uh, the math, we end up with the linear system of equations for the L amplitudes. Uh, and then we resort to approximations. Uh, and the approximation we like using is uh, this one shown here, where we use the Epstein Nesbitt denominators, um, which uh, involve the diagonal part of the similarity transform Hamiltonian of CCSD in the triples, triples block of it. When you do everything that you see on this slide, you end up with the uh, sort of uh, full implementation of CRUMCC23, which we call variant D. Uh, but one can, of course, uh, go through further approximations by replacing, for example, the uh, epstein nesbitt denominator by the miller plesset form of it. When you do this, you end up with variant A, which uh, is actually equivalent to what Sohirata and co-workers could call, would call EUMCC2 PT2. Now, we need in this uh, uh, talk uh, the delta CRMCC23 approach, uh, which uh, addresses one important issue, namely, when you correct uh, the EUMCCSD total electronic energies for triples, you may actually violate slightly, uh, it's not a lot, but slightly the uh, fundamental property of the equation of motion Kappa cluster theory uh, called size intensivity of excitation energies. Uh, we want our methods to be size intensive. Um, so what do we do? We analyze the CRMCC23 um, uh, excitation energies. Uh, those are the omegas here. Uh, and as you can see, those uh, 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 omegas involve the CCSD, vertical excitation energies, corrected for triples using the alpha and beta terms. Now, the okay. alpha term is size intensive, so we're going to keep it. That's a good one. Now, the beta term actually grows with the system size, um, um, which it's not good for vertical excitation energies. So we're going to simply remove it. And when we remove it, we end up with the final formula, the delta CREMCC23 approach. Um, where we are correcting vertical excitation energies of C of EUMC CSD for triples using the alpha term. Uh, this method is size extensive in the ground state because for the ground state, we use the completely normalized Kappa cluster approach called CRCC23. And then it is size intensive uh, in excited states by design. Again, we can go through further approximations. Um, um, we can, for example, recover uh, the older theory of John Watson, Rod Bartlett called EUMCCSD parenthesis T tilde. Uh, but we will in this talk stick uh, with our uh, full variant uh, of Delta CRMCC23, which is called variant D. And now just to give you an idea how accurate these methods can be, um, I'll just show one example, which is relevant to our discussion of FR0SB excitations in uh, various uh, solvent environments. 
Um, so that's the seven, uh, that's cis seven hydroxyquinoline. Um, um, we are looking at the pi to pi star excitation. Uh, you can see here the excitation energies in a bare system in wave numbers. So you can see a significant error reduction in EUMC CSD calculations, about 4,000 wave number error, that's like 0.5 electron volts more or less, uh, down to about 100 wave numbers uh, when you apply our uh, delta CRMCC to the correction. And uh, we can maintain this high level of accuracy by now adding various uh, mo uh, hydrogen bonded molecular environments. So here I'm adding ammonia, water, two waters, two waters and ammonia. And as you can see, in each case, we are reducing the significant error of about 0.5 or 0.6 electron volts in EUMC CSD calculations, which is typical for these kinds of methods, uh, down to about 0.1 electron volts um, uh, when we apply our triples corrections. So that's very useful. That's the kind of accuracy we'll be expecting in our computations. And um, right now, what I'll do, I'll turn the floor to a senior graduate student in my group, uh, um, Stephen Yuono, who will tell you uh, uh, the rest of the FR0SB story. Stephen, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Piotr, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so yeah, as you already mentioned, uh, uh, we will start by discussing the physical origins of the photobasicity of FR0SB. So uh, let's start. So uh, on this side of a slide, uh, I am showing you the molecular structure uh, of the FR0SB compound, which Peter already mentioned is a benign molecule. Uh, it's neutral in the ground state. Uh, but upon photo excitation, uh, it becomes a very strong base such that the uh, imine nitrogen shown here is able to abstract proton from the surrounding alcohol solvent molecules. So this behavior uh, was confirmed by our experimental collaborators by looking at a series of absorption and emission spectroscopy measurements uh, for acetonitrile, which is uh, a protic solvent, and in ethanol, uh, which is a protic solvent. So uh, I will walk you through these uh, experiments by relying on this simplified uh, reaction profile where now we have the unprotonated form of FR0SB in the ground and excited states, uh, as well as their protonated counterparts. So if we look at the spectra over here uh, in the solid lines, of course, we will see the absorption of FR0SB from the ground state uh, to the excited state, still in the unprotonated form. Uh, and we will also see in the corresponding emission from excited state back down to the ground state, right? which are this shaded spectra over here. Now, the interesting thing is that when we look at the spectrum in ethanol, there is an additional peak uh, that is not observed in acetonitrile. So to verify the identity of this additional peak, our experimental collaborators uh, perform a different set of experiments, but this time in acidified ethanol. So we will be focusing on this red spectra over here. So by doing this, we will, of course, see in the absorption of the protonated form of the FR0SB photobase from the ground to excited state, which is this red solid line over here. And of course, it's going to be shifted from the unprotonated uh, absorption spectrum. Uh, and also in the corresponding emission spectrum, which we see uh, matches exactly this additional peak seen in ethanol, but not seen in acetonitrile. So uh, what we learned from this exercise is that there is indeed a proton transfer happening in the excited state, but not in the ground state. Right. So we can also take a closer look at the spectral data and consider the zero zero adiabatic transition energies, which one can uh, approximate using the crossing between the absorption and em emission spectrum. So here we have it for the unprotonated form and here we have it for the protonated form of FR0SB. So using the spectral data, uh, we can then construct a thermodynamic cycle uh, shown over here and in conjunction with uh, what is called the Furster equation, one can then uh, estimate the change in pKa uh, of, of a molecule upon photoexcitation. So uh, as Piotr already mentioned before, uh, the pKa of FR0SB in the ground state uh, is about seven. So upon photoexcitation, using Furster equation, we determine the change in pKa to be about 14 units. So that makes uh, FR0SB in the excited state having a pKa of about 21 units. Uh, so it's a very strong base in the excited state in contrast to the, in the ground state. So our first task in this uh, project is to determine and understand the origin of this photobasicity. So we did so uh, by performing a series of coupled cluster and equation of motion coupled cluster calculations uh, for the ground, 
and several low-lying excited single states of FR0SP. And we did this in the gas phase. Uh, so to do that, uh, we relied again on the Delta CR EOMCC23 triples correction on top of EOMCCSD. So if we focus on the energetics of this low-lying single states, we see a very good agreement in the vertical excitation energy to the S1 state uh, with the absorption maximum of FR0SB in hexane, which is a nonpolar solvent. Uh, and the agreement, as you can see, is uh, in the range of 0.2 EV. Uh, in fact, our experimental collaborators uh, perform a camlet taft analysis and they extrapolated uh, this absorption maximum data uh, using various solvents to the gas phase limit. And we have a very good agreement with our computed values over here to within less than 0.1 EV. So how are we able to achieve such good accuracy with re uh, relative to the experiment? Uh, well, I can show you that if we just rely on EOMCCSD alone, we will definitely overshoot the vertical excitation energies by quite a bit. Uh, so if we do the math, uh, the delta CR EOMCC to three corrections on top of EOMCCSD has to bring the energy down by about 0.4 EV. Now this 0.4 EV cannot be neglected because if we look at the table over here, uh, this 0.4 EV is comparable to or even larger than the spacings between the excited single states that we are examining here. So uh, what is even more interesting for us is when we uh, examine the dipole moment in the ground S0 state and in, in, in the excited S1 state, we see an increase by a factor of about 3.5. And this is, uh, pointing to the photo-based behavior of FR0SB eh, that we have observed experimentally. So we decided to take a closer look uh, into this. And what we did is we computed the total electronic density uh, of the S0 and S1 state uh, at the EOMCCSD level of theory. So here I am showing the total electron density uh, along with the dipole moment vector for the ground S0 state. And after photo excitation, we have the corresponding information for the S1 state. So now this total electron density look very similar to each other. But when we take uh, the difference between the two, we, we start seeing regions colored blue uh, and red, where blue means uh, less electron density or more positive charge after excitation. And red means uh, more electron density or more negative charge after excitation. Now, if we focus on the amine and the imine nitrogen, so this uh, two atoms over here, we see that this huge increase in the dipole moment upon photo excitation is caused by a very small charge transfer of about 0.1 electron. But this happens over a very large distance between the two atoms, which is more than 10 angstrom, right? And this is made possible because we use this uh, central linker, which is fluorine over here. So now, uh, once we understand the <laughs> origin of the photobasicity behavior of FR0SB, our experimental collaborators uh, perform a different set of experiments where they look at the extent of the excited state proton transfer uh, after they excite the molecule using one photon and two photon uh, sources. So what they uh, see was uh, an enhancement when they did uh, two photon excitations and they quantify it by looking at the emission spectra of FR0SB in uh, various alcohol solvent molecules. And then they, they compare the relative peak areas for the protonated FR0SB uh, relative to that of the unprotonated one. And as you can see here, the spectra on the using red line here uh, is much bigger uh, because it's using two photon excitation compared to using one photon excitation. In fact, in methanol, this enhancement uh, amounts to more than 60%. Uh, but when we use other alcohol solvents, we see a solvent dependent behavior in this enhancement. And sometimes the enhancement doesn't even occur at all, such as in isopropanol here. So we started analyzing this data uh, by looking at the absorption cross-section uh, for one photon and two photon excitations. So for one photon excitation, uh, the absorption cross-section is given by uh, this expression and it depends on the transition dipole moments. Uh, while for, absorb for, well, for two photon excitations, the absorption cross-section is given by this sum over state expression, which we can then manipulate to give rise to two terms. The first term over here uh, is what we call, or what is commonly called the virtual pathway. And it involves transition into an intermediate state uh, labeled with new between the ground and excited states. Uh, the, uh, the second term over here uh, is commonly called the dipole, uh, the dipole pathway. And it depends on this delta 
uh, mu F0 uh, term, which is none other than the dipole moment difference between the excited and the ground state. Now, because we know from our previous investigation that FR0SB is characterized by a very large change in dipole moment after photo excitation, we can then safely assume that the two photon absorption cross section can be approximated by the dipole pathway alone. So then we can take the ratio between the two photon and one photon absorption cross section. And we see that again, this delta mu F0 uh, appears and it acts as an enhancement factor for the two photon absorption cross section. Uh, so our task in this project is to provide high quality ground and excited state dipole moments and transition dipoles, including also solvation effects, uh, in addition to accurate energetics. So in order to do this, uh, we devise the following computational protocol. So first of all, we need geometries. So we perform uh, geometry optimization in the ground and excited states uh, for FR0SB hydrogen bonded to three explicit alcohol solvent molecules, which we found to be the minimum number of explicit solvents needed to describe uh, the excited state proton transfer reaction properly. But that is not enough. We still have to account for the remaining bulk solvation effect. And in this case, we are uh, relying on the SMD continuum solvation module. Now, once we have the geometries, we then perform a couple cluster and equation of motion couple cluster, single point calculations uh, at the delta CR EOMCC23 level of theory, where we replace the three explicit alcohol solvent molecules with their embedding potential uh, created using the effective fragment potential or EFP approach. And in doing so, we are able to uh, cut the computational cost of this uh, super molecule complex to just that of the FR0SB fragment alone without losing uh, a lot of information about the intermolecular interaction between the alcohols and between these alcohols and FR0SB. And then we correct uh, the couple cluster and UM couple cluster results uh, for the remaining bulk solvation effects, again, relying on the SMD continuum solvation model. So let's take a look at how accurate the results of these calculations are. Uh, where I will be uh, examining uh, the adiapatic S0 to S1 transition. So if we focus uh, on the energetics, so I'm showing here the 0, 0 adiabatic transition energies between S0 and S1. And let me again remind you that we are using delta CR EOMCC23 and incorporating explicit and implicit solvation effects. Uh, we immediately notice two things. So the first one, we are able to reproduce the correct behavior when we go from isolated FR0SB or gas phase FR0SB to sulfated FR0SB in alcohol solvents, uh, which is a lowering in the excitation energy. This makes sense because uh, we have learned that the S1 state is much more polar compared to the S0 state. So in a polar solvent environment, the S1 state will be lowered uh, more compared to the S0 state, uh, which leads to the lowering in the excitation energies. Right. And the second thing is, is that not only do we, uh, are we able to reproduce the correct behavior, we are also matching the corresponding experimentally uh, measured values for the 0, 0 transition energies to within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 EV accuracy. So now we can also take a look at the, what happens with dipole moments. Uh, and especially if we focus on this delta mu term, which is important in two photon excitations, uh, we see that uh, when we go from gas phase to sulfated FR0SB, this delta mu practically doubles. Uh, and in fact, when we look at the sulfated FR0SB, uh, we see a somewhat sulfon dependent behavior uh, in the delta mu term. And we are also able to uh, reproduce uh, faithfully in the experimentally derived value for delta mu uh, quantity. So uh, here I'm showing you visually the dipole moment vectors for a ground and excited state of FR0SB in the gas phase and in sulfated in methanol. So thanks to the use of the EFP approach, what I'm showing you here is really the dipole moment of the FR0SB molecule. So no uh, contribution from the alcohol solvents. But we still see uh, what happens when we put FR0SB in a solvent environment. And in this case, in a polar solvent environment, which actually is an inducement of a larger dipole moment, both in the ground and excited state. So what we learned in this uh, study is that because two photon excitation is, uh, happens more preferably in configurations where uh, FR0SB will have a large change in the dipole moment. This excited state dipole moment, is, uh, which is large, will in turn makes it easier for FR0SB to deprotonate alcohol when using two photon excitation, 
And this is in contrast to one photon excitation, which doesn't care about the dipole moment information. So of course, uh, that is not all of the story. There might be some other uh, effects that play a role in the excited state proton transfer reaction. And indeed, already in the one photon uh, excitation experiments, uh, our experimental collaborators already uh, observed a different behavior in the protonation when one uses primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols, mm -hmm. uh, which is shown here in the spectrum. So uh, to explain it, uh, I will be relying uh, on this uh, propanol, which is the smallest uh, alcohol having structural isomerism. So we will compare N-propanol and isopropanol. So what our experimental collaborators noticed is that uh, when they perform this experiment in the primary alcohols, FR0SP can uh, readily uh, abstract proton from uh, alcohols like N-propanols, but not so much in secondary alcohols like isopropanol. And in fact, uh, when they did the same measurement using tertiary alcohols, they did not see any proton transfer happening at all in the excited state. That means there is probably steric efflux playing a role in this excited state proton transfer reaction. Now for us, computationally, we can quantify this by looking at the difference in the barrier characterizing the reaction pathway for the proton transfer. So uh, as I mentioned before, we need three explicit alcohol solvent molecules to describe this proton transfer reaction properly. And doing it, uh, so doing computations for FR0SB with three explicit alcohol solvent molecules turned out to be uh, computationally prohibitive for us if we want to use this uh, equation of motion coupled cluster. Uh, so we had to resort to density functional theory and its time dependent extension to excited state. But now we are using the Kambi trail YP functional uh, where we already uh, calibrated uh, the functional against our delta CR EOMCC23 data. Um, and not only that, we, uh, we also take into account the bulk solvation effects using the SMD continuum solvation model. Right. So now uh, let me use this N-propanol as, uh, as an example, and I will walk you through this one-dimensional slice of the reaction pathway where we will be looking at the energy uh, relative to the distance between the proton being transferred and the imine nitrogen of FR0SB. So we can start uh, by optimizing the structure uh, of FR0SB hydrogen bonded to three explicit alcohol solvent molecules in the ground state. So that's the structure. The proton is still uh, sticking to the uh, alcohol molecule. So that's the energy in the ground state. And this excitation energy corresponds to the absorption spectrum of FR0SB, in this case in N-propanol. So then, uh, we relax the geometry in the excited state. So of course, when we do that, the energy in the excited state uh, is stabilized. Uh, but there's also something else that is interesting that we see, which is the proton actually gets closer to the imine nitrogen. Uh, and this happens because as we have seen before, uh, the dipole moment of FR0SB in the excited state is much larger in the dipole moment for, uh, in the ground state. And that big dipole moment pulls all these alcohols closer uh, to the FR0SB molecule, right? So what we do next, we then make uh, the proton closer and closer and closer to the amine nitrogen, as you can see here. But in doing so, we are also relaxing the remaining geometrical parameters, not, not just uh, uh, co uh, computing the energy, right? So uh, in doing so, we end up with an effectively minimum energy reaction pathway for this proton transfer reaction. So we now we end up at the transition state. And if we go further, now the proton is sticking to the imine nitrogen and we have the product of this reaction, right? So after this exercise, we also notice uh, another interesting observation, which is if we follow the ground state energy along the same reaction pathway, we notice that there is no minimum corresponding to the product of this reaction in the ground state. This means that the proton transfer reaction has to happen in the excited state, not in the ground state, which matches exactly what was uh, observed experimentally. Right. So now if we look at the energetics and compare the same, uh, after we do the same protocol for isopropanol and n-propanol, then we can compare the energetics and we see that the activation barrier in isopropanol is about 50% higher uh, than the activation barrier for n-propanol, which uh, then explains why is it harder uh, for FR0SB to abstract proton from secondary alcohol than in primary alcohols. And we can also take a closer look at the geometrical parameters to understand why this is happening. And we see here, if in the, on the reactant side of the reaction, 
uh, that isopropanol cannot approach the imine nitrogen of FR0SB as closely as n-propanol can. This means that the proton in secondary alcohols has to travel uh, a further distance to reach the imine nitrogen, uh, which in turn creates this larger barrier that we observed before. So with that, I will turn the floor back to Piotr. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Um, so uh, I guess uh, I would like to thank all of you for your attention. Before I say the final thank you, uh, let me recognize my co-authors, Stephen Yuono, who just uh, you heard from, uh, but uh, also Ilias Magulas, uh, now Dr. Ilias Magulas. He graduated uh, with us a few months ago. He's now a postdoc uh, at Emory University with Professor Francesca Vangelista and Dr. Jun Shen, uh, who is our senior research associate responsible for much of the uh, coding uh, effort in uh, our group along with uh, other members. So again, thank you very much and thank you for the invitation, uh, Cheryl and Michael and uh, your uh, colleagues. Uh, it's, uh, I look forward to uh, comments or questions. Thank you.